welcome to another episode of Todd Talks, and Todd Talks People Listen. Hopefully. It is the 50th episode of Todd Talk, and I have no idea how I kept going this long, but here I am. And I thank you all for still watching me, or if you're just joining me, I hope you'll uh, stay with us. Now, this is a very special episode, and because of that, I am pushing aside Death Battle just for now. Don't worry, I'm going to do Captain Marvel and vs. Android 18 prediction in the very next video, which should release later this week, if not on Sunday. Um, but this is the 50th episode, and I want to do something grand, so I'm going to one of my other topic picks, and if you didn't already know, last weekend, at the time it's recording, there was a big debut in movie theaters, and I saw it, and I loved it, and I wanted to talk about it here. I speak, of course, of Wonder Woman. And just to let you know, just to let you know ahead of time, there will be spoilers in this uh, Todd Talk. So if you haven't seen Wonder Woman or you don't want to be have it spoiled before you see it, I do ask that you stop now because I'm going to be going pretty deep into what happened in the story. Okay? Good. Alright, so right off the bat, I love this film. I actually have my personal review of it uh, in the comments below. I gave it a 5 out of 5. And I don't do that lightly. I, in fact, the only other superhero movie I have ever given a 5 out of 5 was X-Men Apocalypse. And I got a lot of ridicule for that. <laughs> but I still believe it. But no, and for the record, Wonder Woman is definitely greater than X-Men Apocalypse. But not by as much as you might think. Because um, I loved Apocalypse. Alright, I did. But no, 5 out of 5. I was absolutely moved by this film. Um, I'm not afraid to say I actually cried during this movie. Like, cried in the right way, you know. Um, I was, I was holding back tears during the final act. I really was. Um, because to me, this movie was just beautiful. Beautiful as in characters, beautiful as in story, beautiful as in meaning and intent. This film is absolutely the, mo the movie we need right now. In this time, 2017, America and in the world. Because it's very much not, it's not just about Wonder Woman. It's about the world and how we treat one another and how we can't let hate define who we are. We can't be defined by war, which is what some people have said that it is humanity's different, uh, defining feature, is how, the, how many wars we are in. And Wonder Woman, this film says, you know, there is another way. There is a better way. And... That was beautiful to me, and I'm very grateful to this film. I'm grateful for all who worked on this film. Uh, Patty Jenkins, the director, all the, writer, all the writers, the actresses and actors, you know. Thank you for making an absolutely beautiful film. Thank you. Now, getting into details, I got I got to, of course, start with Gal Gadot. Because when she was announced, everyone threw a fit. Because, you know, like she doesn't look like Wonder Woman. Which, uh, she doesn't have the muscle tone of Wonder Woman. I'm like... Uh, uh, you know, she's not famous enough, maybe, kinda, you know, but here's the thing, if comic book movies have taught us anything, you don't trust the casting, you trust the performances. Do you think I was happy when I found out that Chris Evans, who was, you know, Johnny Storm in the Fantastic Four movies, which I liked, well, the first one more than the second, but anyway, was gonna be Captain America? And now we can't picture Captain America without Chris Evans. Or how about Heath Ledger, you know, Knight's Tale, Ten Things I Hate About You, going to be the Joker, especially after Jack Nicholson have, was the Joker? Or how about, oh, I don't know, Michael Keaton as Batman. No, no one liked that pick. Christian Bale, no one liked that pick. Ben Affleck, no one liked that pick. And now we can't imagine Batman without those roles. Don't let the casting uh, sway you. Let the performances sway Because there have been great castings that have been bad performances and terrible castings that have great performances. And Gal Gadot is no different because she totally knocked it out of the ballpark. She embodied perfectly what Diana of the Mascara is. This beautiful inside and out woman who has this great compassion and love for her, uh, for her in her for the world. Uh, I referenced in my uh, review that Jeff Johns, who actually helped out on this film, uh, said in an interview once during the uh, Blackest Night uh, comic book event that no one in the DC Universe loves the world, Earth, more than Wonder Woman. And that was absolutely true, because she loves the people, she loves the animals, she loves good or bad. There is love for them. 
And that is what drives her in many ways to save the world because, as she notes in, in the film, through love, people can change. And through love, the world can change. And that is my mission forever. And you believe that. Every scene she is in as Wonder Woman, as Diana, you know, she is just this embodiment of purity and justice and joy and love. And it was absolutely breathtaking. But also, she's one of those characters that doesn't have a filter. I don't mean like swearing filter. I mean like, you know, I probably shouldn't say that. So I'm just going to just gonna you know, step back. No, she doesn't have that filter. And one of my favorite film uh, scenes in the film is where uh, the general is... Uh, to totally ripping uh, Steve Trevor, whom I'm about to get to, and goes, you know, I'm not going to risk the armistice for soldiers because so di soldiers dying is what they do. And Diana loses it. You know, she goes right up to him, calls him a coward, says he should be ashamed of himself, that they all should be ashamed, that, you know, true generals fight on the, the front lines. They don't hide behind deaths, you know, while others die. And it was awesome. I mean, Wonder Woman is so pure and straightforward that she says the things that we all wish we could say and I was it was just it, it made me smile a lot as you can see here um, and she had a lot of scenes like that where she wasn't gonna let injustice get in the way of people dying and that was really, really cool for me and yet even in like the quieter moments or the humorous moments which she had plenty of she's she was just so good. She had the confidence of what Diana had, but she also had the naivete of a person who you know, just came out of an island where she's lived her whole life. You know, Gal Gadot totally rocked it. Now, hey, if she's not your favorite Wonder Woman, if she's still not your, your favorite pick to be Wonder Woman, I can understand that. But don't criticize her for because you think she doesn't look the part or she you don't think she was as good as she could have been. She, she was really good. I mean, if Batman v Superman didn't sway you and Wonder Woman solo origin story didn't sway you, I guess nothing's going to sway you. Because, to me, she is my Wonder Woman. Second only to Susan Eisenberg, you know, of Justice League uh, cartoon and the uh, some of the Justice League movies. You know, she is my Wonder Woman. But Gal Gadot is dang close. And for the record, I never got to see Linda Carter. That was after my time. But I did read her in the comics. Very good. Um, I also like Adam West. Just a side note. Going on to a Steve Trevor, I, I really want to uh, praise uh, Chris Pine for being Steve Trevor because Steve Trevor is a very complicated character in that he usually has like one of two ways to be portrayed in the comics. He's either this, you know, ex-spy slash soldier, depending on the time period, um, who is a liaison oftentimes to the Justice League and is a, the former boyfriend former slash current uh, boyfriend of Wonder Woman, or he's Lois Lane in male form. Seriously. Like, if, you, if you've if you seen, like, Batman the Brave and the Bold or some of the early uh, comics with Wonder Woman, oftentimes Steve Trevor is the guy who gets saved by Wonder Woman the same way that Lois Lane gets saved by Superman. But with here, we got to see a much more well-rounded character, and Chris Pine really brought that to life. Um, he, too, has a lot of compassion, and he doesn't want... He doesn't want the war to to keep going because he's seen lives and and he's desperate to end it and so when you know diana says you know hey i, I know a way to do this and if you'll help me i'll help you and all that stuff you believe that hey he she might be the answer to ending this and you know <laughs> i love the scene where he wraps the the lasso around his own arm to prove that he's not lying to her you know that he will help her you know save them and get her to the front lines to save all the lives because it proves that he's not he's willing to disobey orders to save lives and i know that it's in our day and age you know that's saying like oh disobeying orders that that's wrong well there are times when it's okay it should be okay to disobey orders because the greater good is human lives you know either side you know i'm just saying steve was really uh like that and seeing his passion and his compassion uh for life really mirrored Wonder Woman's and I that's why I actually really liked how they did uh, get to be together and they did it very tactfully which is more than I can say that for some other films in the genre uh, you know who you are um, you know they had a very innocent love and I really really appreciate that and seeing Steve again spoilers you know sacrifice himself at the end because he couldn't he refused to let his friends including Diana risk themselves to stop the the plane was perfectly in character with what we've seen in the entire film. And that was beautiful to me. You know, I was really choking my, the tears then when um, 
Steve died. I cried some. I cried a lot in that film. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I'm, I'm not afraid to show my emotions. Um, you know, it it meant something, and you know, seeing what uh, Wonder Woman react to Steve's death was equally as powerful. Um, and it wasn't just some tacked on relationship. It was a real one. And the the chemistry between Gal Gadot and Chris Pine was really nice. And I am going. I am sad that I'm not going to see that continue. Now that's not to say that there weren't other great characters. There were. Um, you know, the, I, I, I honestly don't know if they had a name, but like the, the other allies of Steve and, uh, Diana were really, really cool from Chief, uh, to the, the singing Scott and, uh, of course the gift, the guy with the gift of Gab, you know, that they were really funny. Wait a minute. There's an island full of women and no men. How do we get there? You know, <laughs> that was, uh, that was really good. Actually, before I get to the action, I want to talk about the comedy because there's been a lot of criticism about the DCEU about how it's very humorless. And in a way it is, I mean, I think Suicide Squad was very funny and, you know, how they show these characters at times, um, a lot of their one-liners were really spot on, but I can understand why it's, it's a very, uh, not to coin another uh, phrase, but, you know, it was a very dark universe and I needed to show that because sometimes comedy doesn't feel real. Sometimes comedy isn't natural, but Wonder Woman, you know, it, even in this dark, dark setting of World War One, it worked. You know, even just the scenes of uh, her and Steve talking about re reproduction was hilarious. And I would never want to have that kind of conversation in any of my superhero films. But this one made it work. And then they then throw in, like, you know, Ada Candy and, you know, the other allies. And, you know, this Wonder Woman just throwing out one-liners because she does, even though she doesn't even know it's a one-liner. You know, she, she doesn't know. But it's, that makes it a little more funny. You know, it's... It's awesome. You know, this was a very humorous film, but it was done so with tact and acknowledgement of what's all around her and all, all around them, and I appreciate that. Now, that's not to say that the action, action scenes were, weren't good. They were absolutely great, and I love, personally, that we spent so much time on Themyscira because we got to see the Amazons on their home turf, in their element, and in their own society. Seeing this, you know, society of women, you know, thriving, you know, being the greatest warriors on the planet. You know, that's who the Amazons are. And it was awesome seeing them go against the Germans who technically had the superior weapons, but not the superior skills. And that was awesome, you know. And for me, it's like seeing that and then, you know, jumping into the, you know, the, 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 the world and going to World War I, uh, where Diana is just, you know, tearing everybody apart, you know, using her sword, her shield, her lasso, which was awesome, you know, to, you know, get the job done was great. And obviously, the for me, the best one was the trench scene where, you know, she's like t being asked by this woman, you know, hey, please help us. They, they, they're they enslaving the village. We we need to get the back. And, you know, Diana's like, oh, of course. Steve's like, no, 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 no. And for the record, Steve was very right in saying this, you know, you know, that's no man's land. You can't go there. They've been trying for a year to get this spot and they haven't gained an inch. You know, you can't do that. And she goes, maybe you can't, but I can. And, you know, goes up and just totally, you know, takes the distractions of the forces so that she can, you know, free the trench and then goes into the village and with the help of Steve and everybody just, you know, totally ransacks it to the point where, you know, the Germans are, you know, exposed and done. And it was awesome you know i personally love the, the shield scene because it showed that uh steve trevor was paying attention on uh Themyscira and how the other uh, amazons fought that was really really cool you could string together all the scenes of the action to like one like you know one a movie mini movie if you will and i would never get bored watching it because it was awesome and i'm really happy because i can go back to wonder woman she is this beautiful character inside and out and she is this warrior and I'm glad they showed both sides because it would have been easy for her to just, you know, go into World War One and just dominate because that's who she is. But she is this compassionate soul as well. And even in battle, she shows her compassion, you know, or like when she killed the uh, German general, she's like, she's saying why she's doing it as a justification, like she needs it because to her, it's all, it's all about, you know, saving lives and completing the mission. And I really, really like that. Um... Uh, oh, the setting. I really want to talk about the setting because a lot of there was a lot of criticism about World War One being the setting because technically Wonder Woman was born during World War Two, uh, like born as in, brought into the comics. Um, it really worked here though because 
for Diana, you know, she had been told about war. She, again, she's only been on Themyscira, and she's been told, you know, war is the work of Ares, you know, again, spoilers. But, you know, she's, she's telling, you know, war is this, is this, war is that, and, you know, it's Diana's John's job to stop it, and she has this very pure vision of what war is, because she's like, oh, if I can kill Ares, you know, the war ends. And then she goes into this war, and she sees all the horrors that is transpiring, and she's almost digs into her belief of Ares being the cause of all this, and if, oh, if I can kill Ares, then it can stop, you know, then war will never happen again. And you want to believe her. I mean, you, you kind of see in Steve Trevor's eyes where he's like, I want to believe you, but I know better. And this isn't an insult on Wonder Woman at all. It's part of her character. And even in the end where she does face off against Ares, who I will get to, um, and she finds out, you know, it's not what she was told. You know, he's not this, you know, you know, you will go to war kind of guy. He's, I will let you go to war and I will help you make it grant but it's your choice. And that was very important because in a key scene, Steve's like, you know, maybe it's just us. Maybe we're just that way. Maybe we know, maybe we're not all good, you know? And that's, that's very powerful. And I don't think people realize how big it is that a person admits that, you know, that not all of us are good, sadly. But with Diana, she still believes, even after all of this, even after all these years, you know, going back to the DCE present time, um, she's like, love can change people. Love can conquer everything, you know? And that's that's beautiful to me. And I think that with World War One, with the, the horror, because again, this war went on for a while, and, you know, numerous nations, 25 million plus dead, it was brutal. It was the worst war, the biggest war that the world had ever seen, more than the Romans, the Greeks, and, you know, the uh, War of Independence, the Civil War, anything. You know, this was the grand, this is, this is, there, there's a reason World War I is called the world to end, the war to end all wars. You know, the, the greatest of all wars, because no one had ever seen it like this. And for Steve Trevor, you know, him saying, I have never seen anything like this, you know, you believe him. Now, if you said, you know, if this happened World War II, that effect would have been lost just a little. Because it was like, wait a minute, why, why, why was there a First World War and a Second World War? You know, you can, you can understand now why they went back to that. And, of course, obviously, World War II has been done to death, you know, even Captain America. Um, and even then, I would say that Wonder Woman did better than Captain America because Captain America was very A to B in his goals. You know, it was... You know, I, I want to be a soldier, and now super soldier, I'm going to stop Hydra, let's go stop Hydra, I, I beat Hydra, and, you know, sacrifice myself, but with Wonder Woman, it's, you know, I must kill Ares, you know, the war will end with Ares, it's not that simple, what do I do now, you know, that that's different, and I feel that her journey was much more, um, what's, what's the word, um, passionate, um, True, true to what she is more than ah, that's not right. Um, I, f I feel it's written a little bit better. How about that? Written a little, and again, I love the Captain America the first Soul, the first Avenger, but I feel that Wonder Woman did it better to show that sometimes purity and naivete isn't enough. You know, you can believe something with all you have, but sometimes you have to admit you were wrong. Steve didn't have to admit he was wrong. Hydra was evil, you know, but with Diana, it was more like this isn't as simple as I once thought it was. And that's why she stayed in the world, because she knew that Ares wasn't, you know, the victim, or, no, sorry, not the victim, wasn't the uh, perpetrator like she thought she he was, so. And I feel that really added to it, because if it was just, you know, it, if it was as simple, we all would have called it out. I want to get to Ares before I start the final thoughts, because I, I had heard through a spoiler that I thankfully avoided most of that Ares was in the film, and I wasn't sure how he was going to be portrayed. I certainly didn't think he was that guy. And I won't spoil it. That I, I, I'm i sorry, I can't. But I didn't expect it to be that guy. You know? And that was a really good twist. And you're like, what? But he did But he did that. And he did that. And you're like, what is going on here? But it worked. And I know some people have been criticizing, you know, the, the third act of Wonder Woman. I, I honestly don't get it. Because, again, I was in tears for the right reasons, uh, by that point, but he it worked because he said himself, "I am, I don't 
cause the war, I just whisper in their ears to make them make it better, to make them kill each other faster, you know, to and that was oddly poetic, you know, from a god of war, because it's kinda true. We make the choice to go to war, you know, whether it be our nature or just a desire or something like that. And he's just saying, hey, I am just here to watch. My goal was always to prove that Zeus's creations weren't as beautiful as that you all thought they were. And though he didn't exactly have sympathy, you kind of, it, he very, really, he really resonated uh, with me. And I hope with a lot of other people, because he is a key character in Wonder Woman's mythology. You know, they often go to war with one another. If you've seen, like, the Justice League cartoon, um, they did a great episode with featuring Ares, you know, instigating a war, basically. And it was very kind of, kind of similar to that, you know, obviously different endings. But uh, one thing I really appreciated, and they didn't have to do this, they brought the armor out. Oh, that was awesome. You know, he, he literally built, rebuilt his armor, including, like, the, the helmet that has been seen in, you know, the comics and the Injustice games and everything. That was really, really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate that, and then how he dies, you know, via Diana's hands, um, with her beliefs intact, her saying, you know, humanity is more than war, and him, him now refusing to believe, or him refusing to change his beliefs, because he feels he's, you know, right above all else, and then Wonder Woman saying, that's not how it happens, that's not how it works, so that was a really cool ending. Now, before I end, I do have to talk to uh, you people. And yes, you know who you are. You who are bashing Wonder Woman that the smallest possible way. You saying that, you know, you were justified in saying this or saying that. And my personal favorite, bashing the fact that it earned $103 million. Now, when I say bashing, I don't mean like, you know, it should have made $200. You know, that, that we all knew that wasn't going to happen. But I saw an article saying that Wonder Woman is the lowest grossing DCEU film up at present. At present. Um, because of how it opened in the box office. Boy, do you like to split straws. Yes, it absolutely is the lowest grossing, you know, opening weekend because Man of Steel got 116, Suicide Squad got like 110, uh, Batman v Superman was 166, I think. Um, you know. Yes, it is. But the way it was written was condescending. And that's mean. That's mean. Because if you look at the uh, revenues uh, for every origin in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DCEU, only one film beat Wonder Woman in its opening weekend. Want to know what that is? Man of Steel. I actually spoiled it earlier. I apologize. Um, but... Yeah, it'd be Iron Man, it'd be Doctor Strange, it'd be both the, the be Thor and Captain America and Ant-Man. You know, any origin that was in the MCU or the DCEU, you know, only Man of Steel beat Wonder Woman. 103 million, and then like 120, 130 million overseas. Number one movie in the world, number one movie in America, you know, by a wide margin. It beat them. Beat them all. Don't ruin that. Okay? And hey, I get it. You, and I understand if you didn't like the film. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's your opinion. I understand that. I always respect people's opinions. But don't overly bash. Just just say, hey, I didn't think it was a good film. I thought it could have been better. That's okay. I've met people. I, I have a friend who works at one of my website, one of the websites I work for, Outer Haven. And she gave it a 4 out of 5. But I gave it a 5 out of 5. And we just openly talked about why we thought, you know, our reviews were right. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't evil. It wasn't angry or anything. It was just fascinating. I had another website I work for. It gave it a 4 out of 5. You know, I, that's fine. I and Again, if you thought it was a good movie but not a great film, that's okay. I thought it was a masterpiece. I really, really did. And that's okay. But don't just bash it. Don't find the smallest little thing and just proclaim yourself, you know, right because, you know, oh, this happened, this happened, or Ares was stupid, or, you know, we shouldn't have spent that much time on Themyscira. It's just like, d don't do that. Because that makes you a hater, and that you 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 are literally part of the problem that is that has wrought the DCEU. Because you know you had this expectation, and when they try to do something dish, different, you bash it. Don't do don't be like that. Okay, these Patty Jenkins, Gal Gadot, uh, you know Chris Pine, all these people worked so hard 
to make this film, to make it good. And I, I feel, and apparently a lot of people feel, you know, it was a good film. It was a great film. You know, it was an epic film. It was a wonderful film. Don't, don't, don't take that away from them. Don't bash it unnecessarily. Don't call Wonder Woman a warrior smurfette. You know who you are, the Guardian. You know, don't do that. Be better than that. Be what, be what Wonder Woman wants you to be, a kind and compassionate to be. State your opinion, but then move on. You know, but don't. Don't bash it into pace. What good does that do? You know? And I realize now that I've said, like, you know, like, I think 50 times in 25 minutes and 50 seconds. So I apologize. You know? <laughs> so, in conclusion, I loved Wonder Woman. I am thrilled that there is already a sequel confirmed, directed by Patty Jenkins, and of course bringing back Gal Gadot. I can't wait for Justice League to see Wonder Woman again. And as the legendary Gail Simone said, hey, I think they're going to be remaking, uh, doing a new Justice League trailer. Batman who? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I expect... I expect this movie to have to bring a whole new level of appreciation for Wonder Woman. Now, again, my favorite Wonder Woman will always be the, the, the animated version. But this version just adds to my love of the character. It brings it, it gives me a whole new appreciation because I can I see her in another light. I see her in, in another way, you know. This one. Uh, Susan Eisenberg nailed the voice of uh, Wonder Woman, no doubt. And then I say, hey, Gal Gadot embodied her on screen perfectly mean that's I said you know again dang it um, that's that's beautiful that's awesome that there's a we can like different interpretations of characters because each one when done right adds something new and that's why I really really like this film you know because it gave me more reasons to appreciate this character who is an important part of our culture important part of comic book history and deserved undeniably, to have this movie be great, and it was great. So, with that, I am ending this 50th episode. You know what? I'm going to do this. There we go. This 50th episode of Todd Talk. I thank you for enduring me for 50 episodes with or without the shreif on my head. It's from my comic book home, if you don't know. Uh, <laughs> shameless self-promotion. Um, again, I hope that you liked Wonder Woman. I pray that you'll continue to support the DCEU because it, it's going to be good. Just give it a chance, okay? Um, what were your favorite moments from Wonder Woman? What did you love the most about it? What did you think about Gal Gadot? What did you think about Steve Trevor, Chris Pine? Yeah. Um, what did you think of the action scenes? What did you think of the villains? I honestly did, barely got to touch on them because I was trying to keep it under 30 minutes, and I'm going to be cutting it close. Um... Who's your favorite Wonder Woman? Let's just talk Wonder Woman, okay? Let's just have some fun. Let's revel in the greatness that was this movie. And let's look forward to more female-led, female-directed um, superhero films. Okay? So, I thank you for watching. If you made this far, I know you're listening. And I will see you around. <laughs>